Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Chad Kempton. I am the principal here at the high school, and I want to thank you for joining me for the next few minutes uh, as I share some information with you about the upcoming school year. Um, I will say that all the information that I'm going to share with you tonight is in a Google Doc that I will be sending out to parents and students here tomorrow. Um, it will have some links that you will be able to click on and save uh, for your reference as we progress through the school year. Um, it certainly uh, seems to be an interesting one coming up with the COVID situation that we're in, um, but where there's a will, there's a way, in my opinion, and we're gonna make this work. Uh, so I'm gonna go into present mode here, and then so you guys can see what I am talking about. And uh, if any of you decide that uh, you'd rather just uh, read through the document that I'm going to share tomorrow um, and want to log off. That I will not be offended by that at all. I hear from our tech director that we have about 80 people uh, in the session right now. Um, so let me get into present mode and I'm going to run through some general information first uh, that is really kind of district wide and then I will get into some information that is specific to the high school. So just one second, let me get into present mode. having a little bit of difficulty here because it's always saying I can't share my screen. Well, I'll go through this um, with all of you and uh, see if we can get that technical piece taken care of. So uh, the biggest reason why we are starting out in what we call yellow mode is partly because, or mostly because of the requirements that the Maine Department of Education um, has put in place for all schools in the state. I think everyone knows that the state was recently tagged as being in the all green zone or all green mode, which is fantastic. And that obviously means that we have a low rate of transmission and a low rate of cases. So um, compared to the rest of the country, we're in great shape. Um, but we always want to be careful about how we proceed in the future, especially coming into the fall with cold and flu season. So um, I'm going to go through the six requirements for uh, safely reopening schools first, and then I'll work my way down through. So uh, what you'll see in the document is that there are six uh, requirements that schools have to abide by in order to reopen. First one is a symptom screening um, at home before coming to school. And we have a link where it'll show you a little diagram of the items that you'll um, need to do as a daily self-check uh, prior to leaving home. And those really highlight with um, some questions that I'll read a couple off to you. Uh, within the past 24 hours, have you uh, had a fever of 100.4 and above or used any fever reducing medicine? Uh, the second one is, do you feel sick with any symptoms consistent uh, with COVID-19, such as a new cough, shortness of breath, or other? Um, the third one is, have you been around anyone who is unwell? And have you been in close contact with a person who has uh, COVID-19? Um, so there is a pre-screening worksheet that will be in a applicable link for you to use uh, and reference as you progress through that uh, on a daily basis. And uh, we're just asking uh, parents and students to, to do that every morning. And biggest piece for us is that if you are sick, uh, please just stay home, get your rest and get well, and then uh, return to school when you're healthy. Uh, the next thing is physical distancing and our facilities. And with the physical distancing, a lot, a lot of it uh, revolves around a three to six foot social distancing 
or simply just distancing, which I think is the more recent term, whenever possible. And obviously in a school building and a school setting, we are not always going to be three to six feet apart, uh, especially where there is going to be roughly 300 people in the building. Um, so a couple of those are that groups in any one area, room or classroom cannot exceed the governor's gathering size limits. And this applies to school uh, with a 50 person limit per room. Now, obviously we don't have 50 kids in classes, uh, but some of the problem areas that uh, we've identified are the cafeteria in the morning. We have a lot of kids that gather in there to socialize after they get off the bus or come in from their vehicles. Um, we have kids in the hallways during the morning. And then during lunches uh, with a school of roughly 650 students, um, outside of having 13 lunches at 50 students apiece, uh, that is a significant challenge for us um, in that event. So those are a couple of the biggest reasons why uh, we are in yellow mode instead of green, even though the state is in green. Um, the third big uh, hurdle is um, busing and that our buses, we are limited to one person per seat. And so instead of being able to transport 48 or more students at a time, uh, we're limited to between 22 and 24. So getting students here and getting students home is a significant challenge under the under the uh, regulations that we're needing to abide by. Um, so we are adjusting lunch schedules and we are opening up the facility a little bit and I'll get into that in a little bit as to how we're gonna um, tackle that situation. Uh, classrooms and cafeterias have been set up to accommodate uh, the requirement of the, of the distancing with chairs and desks being at least three feet apart and limiting the number of people um, at tables. And again, like I said, I'll, I'll get into more of that when we get to the high school specific information. Um, we are working with a contractor by the name of Siemens, who is uh, evaluating our ventilation system to make sure that our ventilation system is running at an optimal level. And we've also are in the process of creating a medical isolation space uh, that is separate from the nurse's office in case we do have a situation where someone is presenting uh, COVID-like symptoms uh, during the school day, whether it's a staff member or student. Um, and further on, you'll see that we have a uh, protocol for how we're going to handle sickness. Face coverings or face masks is the next piece in that uh, we're all going to need to wear uh, face masks or face coverings during the school day. Uh, and that includes on the bus to and from school and to and from CATC. Uh, so some people um, have an easier time with this than others. And uh, we certainly recognize that. And we're going to have mass breaks um, that will be scheduled during the day. And obviously, sometimes uh, where teachers, um, given the opportunity, will do mass breaks with their classes. Um, but the face masks or mass uh, coverings or face coverings will need to cover the nose and the mouth. Uh, we will be providing at least two per student. Um, and we've also will be providing those to staff and uh, students and staff can bring their own as long as they cover the nose and the mouth. Uh, face shields are a topic of conversation uh, throughout the state and with schools, uh, the requirement is that there needs to be a medical reason for a student not to be able to wear a mask. And that's something that if you're in that situation, um, please give me a call here at school or send me an email and we can work through that situation together um, and come up with a, a solution so that that works for your son or your daughter. And uh, we're also going to be providing some education on uh, Proper hygiene, uh, some of it is pretty simple and we'll be able to go through it fairly quickly and others I'm sure will generate some questions that, that everyone will have. Um, hand hygiene is gonna be important. Um, washing your hands um, and using a sanitizing gel. I think the last time I knew we had ordered, I think 300 and some odd gallons of sanitizing gel, which sounds a little crazy, but with 
the amount of people that are in our schools, I'm sure that's going to go quickly. Um, so there'll be uh, certain points that we're going to ask and expect people to either wash their hands or sanitize throughout the day, uh, entering the school building uh, before and after eating, after putting on or taking off your face mask for mask breaks, um, obviously after using the restroom and for us with physical education, uh, a general piece would be for a younger grade playground, shared equipment and physical education. And then prior to getting on the bus, uh, both in the morning and the afternoon. So we'll have sanitizing stations uh, throughout the building, throughout the day to help make this easier uh, for everyone. Uh, personal protective equipment uh, will be used as an additional safety precaution um, by our nurses and staff um, who are supporting uh, symptomatic students or co-workers. And so the district has ordered uh, face masks, face coverings, and um, goggles, et cetera, for the PPE that will be needed in those situations, and they will be used um, accordingly. Um, in the event that there's an illness, uh, we have a flow chart that um, you'll see in the uh, sheet that I'll be sending out to you. And basically it goes through a scenario where, um, I'm just gonna pull it up for my own reference. And it starts off with defining off whether the school nurse is available if she is, then we'll notify her and she'll take over and go through a protocol of identifying symptoms and contacting parents and uh, working with the student and the parent or a family member in the situation to get us through a situation like that. Um, there are guidelines that we are using for returning to school after an illness, both for a non-COVID illness, uh, which would be a standard routine for uh, coming back to school after your sickness symptoms um, have been, you've been fever-free or, or symptom-free for 24 hours. And if it's a COVID-19 illness, you'll see that there is a return to school student guideline um, that there's a document that we have in place. And my document shows you to go to pages eight through 10, and that'll walk you through the process and the process really follows the main uh, CDC guidance. And so we're in line with all the other schools and with the uh, main CDC in regards to how we are gonna be treating uh, return to school in the event that there is a COVID-19 illness. Hopefully we don't have to deal with that, um, but there have been a few cases popping up uh, around the state recently. And of course, outside the state with some of the colleges uh, returning back to in-person uh, classes. Uh, we've had uh, some things on the news where there's some outbreaks. So hopefully that doesn't happen here in Gardner. And uh, we have a relatively uh, symptom-free fall. One of the things that obviously we'll do is if there is a situation like that, uh, we'll work with the family and the student to help trace back who they interacted with so that we can notify people and take the proper precautions uh, to help eliminate or prevent it from spreading um, as best we can. We have a couple learning plan, uh, a couple other links on there, a learning plan scenario. And that learning plan scenario really outlines the three levels of uh, programming that we're going to offer. Uh, we have the green zone where we will be in school, uh, in person, five days a week. We have the yellow zone, which will be uh, what we're going to be using. And in that process, we have divided the pop student population into two primary groups, a cohort A and a cohort B. And a cohort A, you'll see on there, will be uh, in person uh, at school for uh, their participation on Mondays and Tuesdays and remote on Thursdays and Fridays. And cohort B will be remote on Mondays and Tuesdays and in person on Thursdays and Fridays. And on Wednesdays, we'll have a transition day where we will have uh, teachers will have office hours for individual help uh, with students uh, for their homework assignments that they're working on or additional instruction if they need it. Um, and then 
we'll also have time for a teacher planning and prep as well as a major cleaning of the midweek of the building. So do a deep clean on Wednesday afternoons after we do our office hours and teacher meetings. And then hopefully we don't get into a red zone, but if we do get into a red zone, then we will be remote uh, for the five days per week. That will look a little differently than the spring did, um, but hopefully we don't need to go there. And But I will reference a little bit of that as far as expectations for remote learning uh, coming up here in the fall, and that would carry over if we were in the red zone. Uh, the next item that you'll see in the document is a return to school learning expectations. And I'm just going to highlight a few things here. There's some similar items in that it talks about the green, yellow, and red zones of operations. But it also has expectations for learnings. Expectations for learning, that is, with educators and with students. Um, and the biggest difference for students with the remote learning is that uh, remote learners are going to be expected to uh, use their Google Meets and Google Classrooms uh, to join into classes as they are being instructed live for the, the group that is in the classroom. Uh, so remote learning will be during the school day and will follow the school's regular schedule. Uh, so first period will start at 7.50. And we'll have uh, Group A on Monday in the classroom, and Group B will be joining in uh, remotely through a Google Meet and Google Classroom. And they'll follow the school day um, as appropriate. And uh, so that'll be a little different. Instruction will not be recorded. And uh, so it'll be important that students attend, um, whether they're in person uh, for their shift or if they're remote. And uh, so that is a little bit different, but certainly doable uh, given the technology levels that we have. Um, a couple of big things that we have here is attend and actively participate in all learning um, in classes and on remote learning days. Daily attendance will be taken um, and expected on both in-person and remote days. Uh, when learning remotely, uh, we're gonna expect that uh, students um, participate as best they can. Uh, obviously with some of our classes, there'll be limitations to that with science labs um, and physical education, but we are working on um, alternate assignments for students uh, in those situations. And uh, make sure that your laptop is charged and that your microphone is muted unless you are gonna be asking a question and again, that you engage um, through the chat box, oral responses, and that your phones are silenced, uh, that you're dressed appropriately uh, for the public like you would be in school, and that um, you communicate with teachers um, when questions are asked. And uh, the last thing would be is that uh, you keep your screen open and active so that teachers know that you're there and that you're paying attention and participating. And getting into uh, the last piece before we go to the high school specifics is uh, we will be sending out an enrollment verification and this will be sent out on Thursday. Um, we have been using the survey that was sent out probably about a month ago to identify kids uh, and family members that are planning on being in person for instruction and those that are choosing to go 100% remote. And we have established our cohorts with that and are actively working with uh, parents and family members to make any adjustments that need to be made. Um, as of this morning, we had 288 kids in our uh, cohort A, we had 269 in our cohort B. Uh, we do have what's called a cohort C, which is our uh, full-time remote students. And we have about 59 students that have chosen to uh, be remote uh, for a full-time basis. Um, and then we have a cohort D, um, which is a uh, students who need to be or are required to be here in the building um, 
full time. So they will be here on both the cohort days for in school learning on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, the document that you'll see has all three scenarios, the green mode, the yellow mode, and red mode. And I'm going to focus on the yellow mode because that's the one we're going to be starting out with. And I don't want anyone to be uh, confused, if at all possible. So uh, transportation, the most important piece here is that students who ride the school bus, uh, the requirement is that seating is limited to one person per seat. Uh, this, again, is a significant uh, limitation to our capacity and one of the main reasons why we're in yellow mode uh, when the state is tagged as being green. Um, buses will drop off students in front of the school and students will enter through the main lobby entrance. And upon entering the building, uh, one thing you'll be doing is uh, sanitizing and then going to advisory rooms. Um, as I referred to earlier, the cafeteria and the hallways were popular places, uh, but given the restrictions that we have of 50 students or less, uh, we're gonna go directly to uh, advisory rooms to start the day. And with that, buses will be arriving later. And obviously they'll be picking people up later and arriving later. Arrival times will be between 7.15 and 7.30 in the morning. Um, students who drive or ride with a friend or a family member, um, we're going to ask that you all park in the T-Wing parking lot and you're going to enter through the T-Wing doors, um, the T-Wing lobby doors or the main lobby doors. Uh, so we're going to be opening up a couple extra doors to help with social distancing um, and reduce the congestion of coming in uh, as we have done in the past with everyone coming back are coming in through the main lobby entrance. So students who are either driving or riding with a friend or family member, uh, you'll be coming in through the T-wing doors or the main lobby doors. And again, sanitizing and going into your um, advisory room. Um, and students who get dropped off. So we have a lot of parents who are dropping off their kids in the morning. And so what we're asking is that everyone uh, does the drop off up in the C-wing parking lot, which is the upper parking lot over by the field hockey uh, playing field. And so we just had that walkway paved. And so you'll be coming down and going into the C-wing front doors or continuing on to the main lobby entrance, whichever one is uh, least busy. And so that'll be a, a short walk for you folks. Um, so we're just asking that parents, if you're dropping your kids off, drop them off in the upper parking lot and they'll have that uh, doorway and C wing for the entrance. Um, weekly schedule, as I said, we will have uh, two days of learning, Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesdays will be a transition day with office hours and then we will have uh, Thursday and Friday as school days as well. Um, and again, cohort A will be live in person on Mondays and Tuesdays and remote on Thursdays and Fridays. Cohort B will be just the opposite uh, and they'll be remote on Monday and Tuesday and live and in person on Thursdays and Fridays. Cohort C will be remote uh, all four days and cohort D will be in the building all four days. Um, so that information is all there and I think I spelled it out fairly Really well, but if you have questions when you read through it, by all means, give us a ring and we'll talk you through it and clarify any questions you may have. Um, another big factor is breakfast in that due to the restrictions that are in place uh, by the state for schools, breakfast will not be served in the morning at school. So that's an important piece. Um, we know how hungry teenagers are and we wanna make sure that you're aware that the food uh, nutrition services uh, we'll only be doing lunches and not be offering breakfast. Um, so I want to make sure that uh, you have a breakfast before you come to school. Uh, they will also be doing a, a bagged breakfast uh, where students can um, get breakfast in, uh, in bulk, so to speak, um, for uh, their meals in the morning and uh, Mr. Dumas has been working with our food service director on that system and more information will be coming out about that, but we'll be setting up 
uh, pickup times for people to pick up their, their breakfast items. And I believe they'll be doing that for three days at a time uh, for people that want to participate in that program. And that will be either uh, for the free and reduced lunches or for the full pay lunches as well. Um, I've got a schedule in there. One adjustment that we've made is that instead of having two lunches, we'll have three uh, to help with spacing, uh, with, especially with that limit of 50 students in the cafeteria. Um, we've got some expectations for staff, which are very similar um, in regards to the hygiene um, that students will be expected. Staff, all staff will be wearing uh, face masks. Some will be wearing face masks and face shields uh, for their comfort. Um, and they'll also be using the sanitized stations um, that students will be using when they enter the building uh, before class, after class, um, when out in the hallways, et cetera. Um, we've got two face masks for everyone. So we're asking that uh, face masks uh, stay clean. Um, and so, and that you wear them in all of the common areas, classrooms, hallways, the main office, the guidance office, the cafeteria, basically throughout the day, unless you're on a mask break. Um, we are gonna open up the tiger's den and the outside area off the cafeteria for mask breaks and teachers uh, will be planful in uh, organizing mass breaks for students during classes um, as, as they can. And the biggest factor there is that you have to maintain a six foot distance uh, for a mass break. And we have to maintain a six foot distance for lunches because obviously you can't eat lunch with a mask on. Um, so we're, we're making adjustments for that. Um, Further on down, student expectations. Again, I, a little bit of repeat, talking about uh, where people will be coming in to the building based on how you arrive. Um, again, talking about face masks and that we're gonna need to be wearing those throughout the day and that we'll be having uh, mask breaks. Uh, we're asking that uh, everyone be respectful of others' personal space, uh, that so-called bubble. Uh, we wanna make sure that everyone has a a nice comfortable uh, personal bubble of at least three feet um, so that everyone is, respect, is respectful of everyone's personal space. And really it boils down to all of us working together to make this work. Um, as I said at the beginning, where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm pretty confident that uh, all of us can make this work and be successful as we work through this uh, yellow mode and hopefully conditions get better so that we can transition back to a green mode and everyone is in the building all together as we have always been. Um, a couple adjustments for social distancing and to re reduce the number of people in the school. Um, obviously the remote learning is an option for anyone that is not comfortable coming into the building. And we just need to know uh, that that is your intention. So if you have not already signed up for 100% remote instruction, please let us know with an email or a phone call, and we will make sure that you're coded appropriately so we know that you're going to be um, using the remote system that we've got set up. Open campus privileges. Uh, eligibility has been expanded, and so it's still based on academic performance. Uh, any students that uh, achieved honor roll status for the first semester of the 2019-20 school year and passed all of their classes, no incompletes for the second semester. We'll start out with uh, open campus privileges and honors privileges. Um, if you have incompletes, uh, those will need to be uh, completed and turned in and recorded before we are going to give you the open campus privilege. And quite honestly, it's just an incentive to get uh, that work done um, so that you can continue on and progress towards earning your diploma. And we'll have uh, teachers obviously will be here to help you if you need help in cleaning up those incompletes from the spring semester. Um, community service hours, I think everyone is aware that we reduce the community service hours by seven and a half hours due to the COVID-19 situation in the spring. Uh, so those are listed in there. Juniors will need 22 and a half hours and seniors will need 37 and a half hours uh, for the open campus privilege. Um, 
So if you do not have those uh, recorded, you should uh, certainly get in touch with Ms. Perret, uh, who was coordinating the Open Campus Privilege. And I believe she's made contact with most everybody in the senior class, if not the senior and junior class about your status. So if you have questions about that, again, let us know. We've got a couple weeks before students arrive and we want to uh, make sure everything is set for September 8th. Um, we've also put in, expanded our use of what we call an amended day. And students, all grade levels, uh, who have a study hall during first period uh, that maintain a grade of 80 or better in all of their classes, have their own transportation or can be transported by a parent or family member um, and have their parents' approval, uh, will be allowed to arrive late at 9 a.m. Uh, and basically kind of have a semi-open campus in the morning if you have a study hall and you meet those that criteria. Um, and then the same thing goes for period four. If you have a study hall period four and you meet that criteria, uh, we will allow a amended day so that you would leave after your period three class. And again, that's just to help us uh, with numbers in the building. And so if you meet that criteria and you get your schedule and it's not on there, uh, certainly work with us and we will take care of uh, getting you that amended day schedule on period one or period four only. One thing I would ask is that please don't bombard the guidance office uh, to try to change schedules. Um, if you don't have a period one or four, uh, they have spent significant amount of time balancing numbers in our classes so that the two cohorts uh, do what we're intending them to do is to reduce numbers in classrooms so that everyone can spread out um, and be at least three to six feet apart from your classmates. Uh, lunches, again, is a challenging uh, setup. We're limited to 50 people in the cafeteria. So we're also going to be, uh, we're in the process of building some benches that will be in the hallways in between the cafeteria and the main lobby. Uh, we'll have some benches in the main lobby area. And we'll also be opening up the Tiger's Den in the area adjacent, the outside area adjacent to the cafeteria uh, for students to eat their lunch and to take mass breaks as weather permits. That'd be a little challenging in the wintertime, uh, but we are going to use those two spaces as long as we can and uh, for the mass breaks as well as lunches. In the wintertime, we'll be transitioning those two spaces into the library and we'll have the library set up for additional space for uh, lunches as well as the little theater. Um, so just trying to give people some options for where they're going to eat lunch and abiding by uh, state guidelines that that uh, are in place again. Um, cleaning and disinfecting, disinfecting the building. Um, as I said, we clean and disinfect the building on a daily basis. Um, I always have and always will, but we will do an extra thorough cleaning on Wednesdays. Uh, so that uh, that midweek check-in uh, to make sure everything is, is cleaned up and ready to go for the rest of the week, as well as a transition from group cohort A and cohort B being in the building. Um, and so that is something that the custodial staff is will be doing uh, throughout the year on Wednesdays. Um, we'll also be cleaning cafeteria cha chairs and tables. We'll be cleaning uh, the chairs and tables in the uh, little theater and the library uh, in between classes. And uh, one of the things that we're going to ask everyone to do is at the end of class, uh, staff members are going to work with their students to uh, clean and disinfect their own chairs so that when the next student comes into the class that they're sitting in a clean chair. Um, we thought about doing it at the beginning of class, but we want to make sure that you're cleaning up after yourself and not somebody else. So the, the chairs and desks will be clean when you sit down and when you leave, uh, we'll leave them in the same manner um, after we all uh, take part and help out with cleaning up after ourselves. Um, athletics is something that is a little bit in flux right now. We're waiting on the MPA uh, to come out with a decision. Uh, earlier today, I was talking with Mr. Stubbert 
and the MPA is going to be meeting with our governor and the state of Maine and I believe the CDC uh, to talk about the guidelines for athletics. And I believe they're going to be asking that high school athletics be characterized as um, athletics that would take place in a recreational setting. Um, so we're waiting to hear about whether we're going to have fall athletics or not and hoping that that decision will be made uh, sometime later this week. And the last thing I want to talk about is CATC. I know this is a hot topic for 60 plus students, uh, primarily juniors and seniors. We will be sending students to CATC this year. Um, busing will be a little bit of a challenge where we can only have one person uh, per seat. Uh, so we will be busing our students that are live and in person on those days. So Mondays and Tuesdays, our cohort A will be going to Vogue on the bus, and on Thursdays and Fridays, our cohort B students will be going to Vogue on the bus for those that have it in their schedule. Um, we will be sending out our regular schedules along with cohort assignments uh, later this week, along with our summer packet. So we'll be looking for that envelope in the mail uh, coming up probably on either Friday or Saturday. Um, I don't anticipate that being delayed. Um, until the following week, but if it is, uh, know that it's coming. And the guidance council is, like I said, have done a lot of work to uh, balance schedules. And hopefully everyone will be satisfied with what they've got. Um, so that is all that I have for today. Uh, I know we were scheduled for about an hour, but I'm sure that uh, everyone um, won't mind getting out of this meeting at uh, about 35 minutes. And again, I'm going to be sharing all of the information that I've presented to you today. I know that I've shared a lot. Um, I'll be sharing that in a printed document so that you can look it over at your own uh, leisure. And if you have questions or concerns with anything you see, by all means, call one of us administrators. We're here throughout the day. Or if it's a guidance uh, related issue, the two guidance counselors are in full time and we'll be glad to work with you. And we look forward to the 2021 school year and we're going to make it great so thank you very much for your time and attention and putting up with me for the last 35 minutes and i look forward to working with all the kids that will be coming to gardner high school this year and like i said i want to make it a great one and where there's a will there's a way and we will work together to make this make this good all right take care everyone